So welcome guys, as you all know, it is Black History Month and um, at Ernest here we're doing the Black History Lesson, which is going to be hosted by me, Sonia, if you haven't met me, I've started recently, um, really excited to get started, um, thank you all for coming, I'm going to try and make it as quick as possible, um, it's very much bite-sized information kind of like a springboard for you all to go off and do your own research. So I highly encourage you to do that. And yeah, I'll try and get you all out by 5.30. Um, no, don't worry. I think we're all looking forward to this, actually, honestly. So. Oh, okay, great. We'll stay until six. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, so just quickly, if I run through what we're going to be doing. So we're just going to do a quick um, run through of Black History Month in general, what it's all about, um, general facts about Black History Month. Then we're going to go through famous figures, go through historical events. And then lastly, we're going to have a little myth busting session. So that should be fun. Okay, so firstly, Black History Month actually used to be called Negro History Week. So obviously we don't use the word Negro anymore. But I think what's interesting is that it used to only be a week this was established in the US um, by a man called Carter G Woodson who we can see here on the left and um, he was just like a prominent black scholar did a lot for the black community um, especially writing and whatnot um, so this was introduced in 1926 and the aims were just for the survival of the race and as you can see here in the corner we've got his quote um, I'll just read it out quickly if a race has no history, it has no worthwhile tradition. It becomes a negligible factor in the thought of the world and it stands in danger of, it, of being exterminated. And I think that's just really important um, to remember that, you know, obviously it's important for any group of people to be acknowledged in history. Um, so from Negro History Week in the US, it was then developed to Black History Month. But then after that, in the UK, this man here on the right, Akiaba Adai Sebo, who is a Ghanaian man, established the UK's Black History Month, which was in 1987, much after um, the, U the US Black History Month. And his aims were basically to empower, empower Black children and young people. So as you can see on the side there, he said that he chose the month of October because it was fresh after the summer vacation. So it was a good time for young people to get in touch with their roots. You know, they've come back from um, holidays, they're fresh, they're excited and ready to learn. And um, it was kind of inspired by um, a work colleague of his who had a son who um, she came in looking down one day and basically her son told her that he wanted to be white. So when this story was relayed to him, he just, you know, obviously saw that there was a need for something like a Black History Month in the UK because Black children had low self-esteem and they didn't know their history. So I'm just going to quickly go through the pros and cons of um, Black History Month. I think it's easy to assume that, you know, Black History Month, well, it is inherently a good thing, but there are, you know, some upsides and downsides to it. So first of all, um, recognition and acknowledgement, like Carter G. Wilson said, a race or any group of people with no history can easily be forgotten and, you know, just like fall off the face of the earth if, you know, and there be no record of it. So, and just like anyone, any achievements, you know, need to be acknowledged and give credit where credit is due. And um, the second prose is um, what Akwaba mentioned in terms of young people just raising the self-esteem. I think the curriculum in the UK particularly focuses on, you know, topics like slavery, which just makes young people just have such low self-esteem. And like that young man, which um, his colleague came to him about, um, you just assume that you're lesser than. So it's important to highlight the histories and the victories of black people and have this time. <laughs> So the cons, um, I think it encourages complacency. So I think with like certain institutions and companies, obviously it's great that there's this one month um, where we celebrate black history to hold people accountable. But for some people, it's kind of just like a tick in the box. Okay, we've spoken about the black people, maybe they'll shut up now. So it's kind of like, you know, they do it for one month, but the rest of the year round, 
you know, kind of get complacent, aren't really as active. So I think that's something that's really important to remember within this company, particularly to carry on in the same vein throughout the whole year um, for other ethnic minorities as well. Then lastly, capitalizing um, a lot of like organizations and companies like to capitalize on the fact that it's Black History Month, create, you know, the content that people want to see, they know they're going to get a good response um, and they know they're probably going to benefit from it financially. So um, that's just, you know, another downside of just having one month where people just have to tick the box and they're done. Okay, next one, I'm gonna quickly go through famous figures that we all probably know. Um, Martin Luther King, um, obviously he's a really prominent black figure. Um, if you didn't know, the I have a dream part of his speech was actually improvised. Like the second half in general was pretty improvised, but the first half was pre-written. And then just below is Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman was basically like a freedom fighter. She led like 100 slaves out of slavery um, using the Underground Railroad, which was like a route of safe houses and safe passes, um, which slaves used to escape their slave owners. And then Malcolm X here, um, another prominent black figure, I'm sure you've heard of him. He was actually a Muslim. A lot of people didn't know this. So that's something interesting about him. Um, and lastly, Rosa Parks, who obviously, you know, refused to give up her seat on the bus and triggered the Montgomery bus boycott in America. Okay, so I'm going to move on to famous figures you may not know. So firstly, I'm going to start with Madam CJ Walker. So she was the first female self-made millionaire in the U.S., full stop, but she happened to be black as well. So that's just really amazing because she came from poverty and because, you know, she came from poverty, she started experiencing hair loss, experiencing hair loss because she couldn't take care of her hair. So she created this hair growth remedy, which actually worked. She started selling it to other black women and it became a success. She turned it into a cosmetics company and the company actually still exists today. And with her wealth, she donated to um, black um, social movements and she also gave lots of black children um, scholarships to attend schools. Next, we've got Sarah Rector, a bit of an interesting one. She was so rich that she was declared white. So Sarah Rector became the richest black girl in America at just age 11. So basically what was happening was the government were giving out um, land um, left from the Indian allotments and her family, her parents got some land, but they couldn't afford to like continue paying for it. So they rented it out to oil diggers. The oil diggers hit a gusher and found loads of oil and essentially the family were making loads of money. Some of that money was going to Sarah. She was earning $300 a day, which is the equivalent of $7,500 today. If you can do the maths, you know, that's more than what we're earning. But um, yeah, so she was earning a lot of money. And basically, because she was young and she could only access the money when she was 20, she became like richer than her parents, richer than the rest of her family. Um, so she was so rich that the state of Oklahoma declared her white so that she could avoid the Jim Crow laws. Um, the Jim Crow laws were basically a bunch of laws made specifically for black people after, basically to control black people after the abolition of slavery because, you know, just didn't know what they were going to do. So it was things like they couldn't buy liquor, they couldn't congregate after sunset, and they couldn't like testify or be witnesses in court for cases um, concerning white people. Okay, and then the next one is Sarah Bartman. So Kim Kardashian body or Sarah Bartman body. So as you can see here on the left, this is Sarah Bartman. She was a South African woman and um, South African women are quite known for being curvaceous as many African women are. Um, so basically a white man found her in Africa and told, he, told her that, you know, 
she was going to have a good life. He was going to take her back to England. But what he actually did was exploit her. And he basically made her like a caged freak show attraction. So she was forced to like dance around naked for crowds of people, which I'm sure as you can imagine, just extremely degrading. But like in pictures like this where she was advertised her features were like exaggerated a lot just to like emphasize how crazy like the black body is and how crazy like um her features were in comparison to like the normal eurocentric beauty standards of like being slim being petite what like a woman should look like um so yeah after she died her remains were used for scientific research and they were actually kept in a museum until 2002 when um, she was allowed to be buried. Um, so this is just an, an example of one, how black bodies have been used um, for medical research throughout history. And also two, how like this kind of um, like figure has been popularized by white people um, in the media like things like you know having a curvaceous figure having a big bum having big lips how these are features that black people have been mocked for throughout history but then you know have been popularized by white people over time okay so i'm just going to quickly go through some historical events i hope you're all keeping up i'm not boring you too much am i feel free to respond not at all, not at all. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to go through the scramble for Africa first. So this is basically when 13 European countries um, and the US met up in Berlin to essentially share out Africa and lay out the rules of colonization. So this happened because like many European countries were losing money and they wanted to expand their empire. And Africa was just the perfect place to go because it was rich in resources. But at the same time, many outsiders viewed um, Africa as uncivilized. So they kind of thought they were doing Africa a favor um, in some way. If you look on the left, this is a diagram which shows um, vaguely how Africa was um, divided. As you can see, blue is France and pink is Britain. So they got, you know, quite a few chunks of Africa. And um, yeah, it took quite a few years for these um, places to be free of their colonial powers, um, which is why many black people celebrate their ind independence days, like these days, just to celebrate when their country was free, but there are still some countries that are colonized today. Okay, so this is the Windrush generation. Um, so after World War II, Britain basically needed help rebuilding the country. So they invited um, people from the Commonwealth countries to come over, promised them, you know, prosperity, wealth, employment. Um, so a bunch of Caribbean people came over, helped rebuild England, and were essentially part of, you know, of that whole rebuilding period. And um, some of you may remember a few years ago, the Windrush scandal happened where um, lots of these um, com people from Commonwealth countries were being deported randomly because they weren't being given citizenship or British passport, even though they'd been here for a very long time and it helped rebuild the country. Um, so yeah, they were just being sent home. Um, without a care to be honest and um that's still something that's going on today um people are still um fighting for their reparations and then lastly for the events is the bristol bus boycott um like i mentioned before the montgomery bus boycott which was um triggered by Rosa Parks, who didn't, um, who refused to give up her seat, was followed by this Bristol bus boycott, which was in the UK. So basically, the like main local bus um, company was refusing to hire Black and Asian people. So what happened was Black and Asian people stopped taking the bus for what lasted four months. And after a while, um, the company basically like, removed their um, colour bar. So because majority of the people that were taking the buses were immigrants, they were 
black people they were Asian people and other ethnic minorities it just got to the point where they were losing so much money that they just had to start hiring them in order for them to survive okay and lastly we're going to move on to the myth busting I've just got a few here for you and then I will let you go um firstly we've got Martin Luther King here um, a lot of people, you know, see him as the face of like black civil rights and, you know, assume that, you know, he's kind of, you know, the face of the black community and the whole black community um, feel that he's a representation of them. But that's not really the case. He was actually quite a controversial figure. Um, he was known for having multiple affairs with both married and unmarried women. Um, I think one of his affairs was with a white woman as well. So at the time that caused a lot of controversy considering what the like racial dynamic was. Sorry about this. Mm -hmm. Guys, I live in Lewisham, so this happens a lot. <laughs> but yeah, um, so he was known for being quite a controversial figure and he was actually supposedly involved in um, a very serious crime. Um, if you want to go research that, you can do. Um, but yeah, overall, he definitely did, you know, take major strides for the Black community, but not all Black people su supported him and supported the way that he did things. Okay, next is um, this young Black girl here in the centre. Um, so the expectation is that, you know, Rosa Park was um, the first to refuse to give up her seat on the bus. But um, there was actually someone who did this before her and her name was Claudette Colvin, which is the girl in the middle. So she did this before Rosa Parks, but, and she got charged for um, not abiding by the rules of segregation. So it was very much a known thing that she did this before her, but people didn't want her to be kind of the face of the movement because one, um, she was dark skinned. Um, Rosa Parks was actually a, a biracial woman. So she was a lot lighter than Claudette. She was also 15 and she was pregnant. So she just wasn't like the representation that they wanted to be the face of this movement. And then lastly, um, I don't really, I personally don't really like talking about slavery, especially during Black History Month, um, because I feel like the curriculum has already covered that so much and there's so much more in terms of black history but this is a common misconception that I'd like to talk about that slavery ended in the US in 1865 but that's not really the case um, because a lot of slaves were um, it was made illegal for slaves to be able to read and write so a lot of slavery slaves didn't know that slavery had ended um, in a lot of places unless you know you were told you, the slave masters just kept them and also um, some slaves were kept um, like through peonage so basically slave owners would tell the slaves that they're in debt to the slave owners and they had to work off this debt so essentially had to stay and continue working until they paid off this debt. And they'd, once again, because many slaves couldn't read and write, they'd forge th these like contracts and whatnot. And um, lastly, another point, um, s slave owners were actually compensated when slavery was abolished. They were actually compensated for letting their slaves go because it was such an inconvenience to them. And many slave owners actually complained that the compensation that they got wasn't enough. So, that's just a few ways which um slavery continued or it wasn't necessarily just stopped like it's explained okay that is all that we've got for today just an introductory like base level black history lesson for today but in the coming weeks we're going to talk about black culture and black contribution then the black experience a sociological analysis and then black culture in regards to marketing, which should be interesting. So, um, and also um, all of this stuff is gonna be on the Ernest at Home page and on the socials. So if you wanna get more links, learn a bit more, please look out for that. And yeah, that's it from me. Um, thank you so much for coming and listening. Um, could I just get an idea on time if we've got any questions? 520.
Five twenty. I hear cool. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Oh, I, I mean, it was br- this was brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And if you've got any like recommendations of you know books and stuff like that, because I, I sort of consume quite a lot of books. Anything that's um, good to read, but I'd love to learn more about it. So that was brilliant. Yeah, definitely. I will be sending out different resources like cool. through emails um, in the coming weeks. So there will definitely be like some good reads, some good watches um, that you can engage with. Okay. Is that all? Thanks so much, guys. I've seeing... got one. I've got one minor request, actually, if that's all right. I'm sorry, it's not a yeah. question. Um, is there any way um, we could change the one on the 20th? Because we've got the big kickoff trifle that day as well. And okay. it might may, may just be moving it around by half an hour or anything like that. Because um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be able to come to the week three one as well. So. Yeah, that's no problem. I'll sort that that's out. Really selfish. <laughs> no, it's all right. I'll sort that out. I'll go around in the emails. So oh, cool. I'm an eye out for that. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Um, Thank you so much. Bye.